Hello everyone, it is me again, and I am coming at you today with a video kind of showing what my writing notebook looks like and talking about the system that has been working for me lately um, because I feel like you guys have been here for me trying a lot of different methods and systems and, you know, nothing's ever really worked and stuck. So this one seems to be sticking, so I thought it would be, I don't know, interesting to share. Maybe maybe it helps other people, I don't know. Because I kind of feel like I had to take like multiple like aspects from different people and make my own, I don't know. So yeah, uh, welcome back if you're an old pal and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is April, I am a 30 something year old struggling writer who just wanted to, you know, have a channel where she can document her journey and, you know, all that stuff. So if you are into, like, rambling nerds who just love writing, maybe this channel is for you. So, you know, subscribe. <laughs> I'm gonna switch to, like, a top-down view, or try to at least. Uh, it's been a while and I don't have, you know, the best equipment because I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> But yeah, so I just wanted to film, you know, I didn't want to just open on my notebook. I wanted to give a little bit of an intro, I guess. This is my writing kit. I think this is like a planner case or whatever, which reminds me, that is what I wanted to say. I will be showing off like some products here because I am, when it comes to like planning and stuff, I'm very much analog. I have to do it by hand. So I have some products, you know, that help me with that. So I will link them down below. And if I forget something specific and you see it and are interested, definitely ask me about it. And I'll tell you, I just have a worse memory than a goldfish sometimes. So, you know, if I forget something, don't be afraid to ask about it. And if I don't remember where I got it, believe me, I'll just tell you that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna, it's a little heavy, but I am going to switch into a top-down mode so I can show you my writing kit, essentially. Okay, so bear with me because this tripod thing that I got my phone on is more like um, an arm and it kind of wiggles a little bit. So I will try to keep the phone as steady as I can. But anyways, this is my writing kit. I found this on Amazon. I think it was just like a planner pouch, a planner organizer, something to that effect. I actually found it by looking for Bible carriers and Bible like organizers because a lot of people like to carry like highlighters and stuff with their Bibles. And that's how I found this. I will link it down below. It was about $20. I don't keep anything in this front pocket. So let's just uh, jump right in. So this is my iPad. It is an eighth generation iPad. And I was actually going to get a new one because I really wanted the Magic Keyboard, but then I found this Logitech. It is the Logitech, excuse me, Logitech Combo Folio. And it essentially works just, just like a Magic Keyboard. You know, you can prop it up and it has a little trackpad and stuff. It's great. This is what I have written my last three stories on and I really love it. It's a little heavy, super durable, and I just love the features. It also has this for your Apple Pen, but my Apple Pen has like a case on it and it won't fit in there. So I just, you know, that's just a tab for me. <laughs> so before I go into detail with my system, this is just my little carrier. These are the Sharpie S-Note Duos. They have the chisel tip and then they have this little round tip it's not even like a fine point but it, if you write like really straight up with it it is a really fine line it's i don't know i saw them on sale and i was like oh those are perfect because i wanted highlighters that were separate from what i use for my planner which are the zebra mild liners and in here just a little tiny pocket i have this ruler and a pen refill um, this isn't really a ruler, it's from the Hobonichi, so it has, it's like a little stencil, but I use it just for the ruler, basically, when I need straight lines. My Apple Pencil, like I said, this is the little case that it comes in, and I have a little tip on there, so I don't have to have, like, a paper-like screen protector. This works. Keep my pencil from, like, gliding too much across the glossy screen, but this is why it won't fit in that little thing. So yeah, I just have a small collection of things that I use fairly regularly in my writing journal. So, you know, whiteout pen. This is my eraser. I love this eraser, 
but I got it from Jet Pens, and when I got it, they were selling refills. They are no longer selling refills or the eraser, like, can, uh, holder itself, so that is most unfortunate. And then some Bit Crystal ballpoint pens are my favorite, uh, Zebra Sarasa Clip, this pink RSVP. This is what I use for, like, note-taking and when I'm, like, reflecting in my writing notebook. You know, this is, like, personal, I guess. Whereas when you use black ink, that's strictly for story purposes. It's just a little fine liner for like when I'm drawing charts and stuff. And then a pencil. This is my everyday carry because I use all of this in my writing journal. Uh, this is a little, I got this, I'm a member of the sticky club and so every month I get like themed stickers. Um, I'll link that down below too. This month, this most recent month, came with this little booklet with this waxy paper so that you can put stickers in here but then continue to use the stickers later. Like it's like the same material that is like the back of a sticker sheet if that makes sense. So I have like these writing related stickers. These stickers are discontinued. They were from a shop called Paper Panda a long, long time ago and she is not selling them anymore. So I will not link her. Well, I'll still link her just in case you guys are interested in other things. These are from Coffee Monsters Co. If you're in the planner world, you've probably heard of them. <laughs> and I don't remember where these little laptops are from, unfortunately. But anyway, I like, I wanna use these stickers for like just tracking word count. So I keep these in here because before I was just using, let me show you. I have this typewriter stamp. And so I stamped out a bunch of these typewriters and then I would color in the typewriter and then write in my word counts and then just glue it in to my writing notebook. And you'll see when I show you but these typewriters are pretty big, especially for the size notebook that I have, and I just got sick of doing it, so I'm just gonna use some like old stickers that I had instead. So here is my writing notebook. This, as you can see, is a disc bound, but it's not a happy planner um, or even the tool planner, I think is how you pronounce it. Tool, tell, whatever. This is from Talia, Talia. Talia products. I, of course, will link them down below as well. They are a little bit more affordable in my opinion because I love Happy Planner. I think Happy Planner is the best quality disc bound system that you can buy, but it can get a little pricey. This is the junior size. They have three sizes, which kind of like the Happy Planner. They have the junior, the midsize, and the letter size. And I wanted a small one, so it would be easier to have like an everyday carry. It came with the front and back cover, obviously. The rings, which are solid, unlike, you know, the Happy Planner. It came with, like it was a kit. So the kit came with the covers, the rings, a pack of five dividers, a clear folder, like a clear pocket folder, and uh, some stickers. And it all came in this little pouch that I'm using to house the stickers I use specifically for my writing notebook. And let me show you, like the stickers it came with, they just have, oh, these are like from Sticky Club, <laughs> but they're just these like really plain general stickers for planners but they're actually super helpful for me so i have been using them so like i said this pouch the covers the rings dividers pocket folder and then it came with 12 monthly inserts and 100 sheets of lined paper and that was 40 dollars. oh excuse me no excuse me i'm wrong because I added, I ordered 100 sheets of graph paper and also weekly inserts. So with all of that, the kit, and then the two separate uh, packs of inserts, that was $40, which was super affordable for me. <laughs> so yeah, uh, getting into it. This sticker is from uh, Bookish Owl Designs on Etsy. Um, this was a little freebie that I got sent with it. And I just thought it was cute, you know. Uh, this is from Kevin, uh, Kevin the writer. He has a shop. I'll link his shop down below too. He has just some cute stickers and I love them and I never use them because I never want to waste them, but I decided I could spare one. This is just like a swatch because, you know, so I can keep track of like the highlighters I'm using and the pens I'm using and if they have like 
bleed through and stuff, which they do. <laughs> so anyway, getting into, I guess, the nitty gritty. I have the Romancing the Beat Beat Sheet. I am pretty sure the author is Gwen Hayes. I will, of course, link it down below. She has a book on her method for plotting out romances, and it is called Romancing the Beat. And it's just so helpful, so I have it up here so I can reference it. But then I also have the Save the Cat Beat Sheet, which I'm sure everyone here knows about Save the Cat by Jessica Brody. And I have this because I like to, when I have my finished like romancing the beat outline, I will then like come to here and kind of match it up. And that really helps me with like pacing, I guess. Yeah, so I have both of those just here for reference. And then we get into the fun stuff. So I have five tabs, word count, session logs, brainstorming, outlines, and notes. So I'll just go through them real quick for you. So the word count, this is where I am keeping track of like my daily word count. Let me show you a blank one. Here is what it looks like, like before you do anything to it. And I hate, I hate that it has color. I wish this was just gray instead of this mint green. And one unfortunate thing is that when you get inserts from Talia, they do have like branding on literally everything. Like, like the fact that it's on the grid paper and it's on the lined paper and i'm sure it's even on the blank paper if i had bought some <laughs> and i hate it but at least i can say i'll show you my december spread it does give you little stickers to, like if you get the kit that comes with the stickers it gives you little numbered stickers on each monthly like sticker sheet so that you can cover up those ugly mint dots <laughs> and i just you know try to make it look as cute as i can but obviously this is December and we just started December, so. <laughs> so for November, first I was just trying to be all cutesy doing different shades of pink and you know, wasn't working. But then I also, on days when I'm not actually writing, I would instead write little notes about like what I did do. Like, oh, I converted this to a PDF so it's easier to read, you know, when I'm revising and all that stuff. Otherwise I just write word counts and then write, I guess, how I'm feeling about what I did that day. But it also came with like this index page that I didn't know what to do with it, but I knew I wanted to do something with it. So it's not a productivity tracker, but it is how I feel about my productivity. So I'm starting in November. So I made, I just added like 22 after these two months and then 23 after the rest. So I knew, you know, this was this year and you know. But so for every day, I'm colored in based on how I felt about what I got done. So pink is I'm happy with what I did. This pretty golden color is like, I feel okay about it. Like I'm happy, just not, you know, this happy. <laughs> Blue is that I don't really feel all that great about what I did because I feel like I could have done more. And gray is I feel like I didn't do anything. And I'm happy that there's no gray for the like all of November, that's pretty cool. A lot of blue towards the end, but that's okay. <laughs> so then in my session logs, let me show you what a weekly insert looks like without any stickers. Again, this ugly mint color and the branding at the bottom. But yeah, so this is what the weekly inserts look like before I use them. And then this is, see, here's the typewriter stamps, what I do with them. I, like I said, I color them in and ignore my shitty handwriting. I try to make it look cute. I'm not good at lettering. I'm not good at anything. So <laughs> for what I do, I'm gonna turn this while I tell you what I do. <laughs> so for my session log, I will sit down at the beginning of the day and write a bulleted list of what I want to do, i.e. start chapter six, finish chapter six, brainstorm chapter seven, start chapter seven, and then throughout the day, I will take my pink pen and cross it off as I complete it. And it's just, it keeps me motivated and keeps me kind of doing it. And every time that I finish a chapter, I will write the word count after that like bullet point. And I also will use my pink pen to like write notes about how I felt that day, about what I accomplished. And it's just me reflecting and just keeping in the writing brain essentially. So brainstorming. Brainstorming has become super like effective for me as a writer. I used to never do it but I have discovered that I can't write without it. So when I need to brainstorm for a chapter, I will write the chapter like heading like chapter six, and then I will draw like a little storm icon next to it. And then I will highlight it in the color that I have, like I've come to associate with that character because I write 
chapters in alternating points of view, so I will highlight it just so I know which character it is. And then I do a bulleted list of everything that I want to happen in that chapter. And again, I will take my pink, pink pen, excuse me, and every time I write a scene and finish a bullet point, I will cross it off and keep going. And I'm telling you all of this now because I don't really want to show you show you because <laughs> these are like the later chapters and I'm embarrassed by like my unpolished writing, I guess. So as you can see, <laughs> That's what I mean when I write, when I say a little storm icon. Oh, and then when I finish and I've crossed off all of like the bullets, I will then use my pink pen and also write the word count there just so I can keep track. <laughs> and so that, I have to do that before I write every single chapter. And then sometimes I just need to brainstorm different things like I'm revising, so I needed to change something about a scene. So I was asking myself how I can make this scene different and make it work better. So yeah, <laughs> sorry, that was like a lot of nothing because I'm so embarrassed to show like my brainstorming. <laughs> so then the next tab is outlines, but unfortunately that section is empty because I have not outlined a new book since I moved into this size notebook. But if I were going to, I would take the Romancing the Beat beat sheet and then I would by hand outline the full story and then type it up in my Scrivener document but I always write it out by hand first because I just feel like my brain works better that way. For example, before I moved in to this, I was using a Happy Planner, uh, one of the big sizes, because I loved that I could just buy like a ream of paper and punch it and I didn't have to worry about cutting it or anything. So this was my writing notebook before and I even bought a label maker for the tabs, but freaking. <laughs> The label maker makes labels too big for the tabs that, you know, I'm using now, so what a waste. Here is, like, the outline that I did for my most recent book. Like I said, I just hand wrote it and, you know, have my little sections and bullet points, essentially. I just hand wrote it and then typed it up on Scrivener, and then I can reference it and compare it to the Save the Cat beat sheet, and that is how I do outlines. And then notes, you know, notes is what it says on the tin. <laughs> also, you'll notice that this friggin' divider got like punched wrong. And so it's like just at the edge. And I plan on buying new dividers, but they're out of stock of the pastel colored ones. So I just haven't done it yet, which is annoying because I hate this. I hate it so much, but it gets the job done. So in the notes, I just have my revision plan. I'm currently working on a fir the first round of revisions for my first book in this series. And after I read it, I took some notes. And then after I took those notes, I went through and came up with like, I called it the bottom line notes, so that I knew exactly what I wanted to focus on for the first round of revisions. And then I was working on a timeline here. Here's my finished timeline. So this is the first month that my story takes place in. And I just wanted to kind of denote, I guess, what these chunks of story were significant to like um chapters five through seven are significant for poppy and the romance whereas like chapter nine became significant for jackson and drama <laughs> and i want to point out that drama only appears where jackson appears oh he drama's up here too with the romance but i, I just gotta say you know the girls who like to say they hang out with guys because there's less drama I don't know about that. <laughs> and those are just characters for reference because I'm always, like my story takes place in a small town so I want to write down any minor characters so I don't forget their names. And here's the folder that came with it. And these are the sticker sheets for November and December. Oh, and this was just a blotter or whatever. But I'm keeping these just, you know, to use like these remembers and to do's and stuff. And these are like the rest of the stickers that came like with the Talia notebook, just generic, you know, take notes, remind me, stuff like that, that I keep in here because you never know when you might need it. So yeah, that's been, what what is working for me is romancing the beats, comparing it with the Save the Cat beat sheet. And before I sit down to write every chat, like I'm an excessive outliner, clearly. You know, I have my romancing the beat outline and then I sit down to write and I have to brainstorm by hand chapter one before I can even start chapter one. And then I finish chapter one and then I have to brainstorm chapter two by hand 
and then I write chapter two and, you know, rinse and repeat. So I'm definitely an obsessive planner, but I think that's working for me because, like I said, this has worked for the last three books that I wrote. That is how I wrote Possibly Maybe in such a short amount of time. And then my mo two most recent books that I mentioned in my last vlog that I wrote kind of in the span of a month. I, I was able to write two books in their entirety. So clearly this method works for me. I have found a way to satiate the obsessive nerd inside of me and I'm just feeling pretty freaking good about that, honestly. So yeah, that was a look inside my writing journal and what, what I'm doing right, at least right for me, in terms of writing, <laughs> the right thing. So like I said, I kind of take, I'm just that kind of person, like I learn visually, so you know, when I'm doing things, it's like I like to watch other people do it. So I have taken, like, just the term session logs comes from Rachel Steven, who you guys know I am a huge fan of. I took the, um, Story Magic Academy course that she offers. I loved it. It was super, super expensive, but I loved it to death and I still use a lot of what I learned. She's a lot like me in the sense that she's an analog planner and she seems a little obsessive. I don't want to say she is obsessive, that feels kind of like an insult, but she seems kind of obsessive in the way that I am obsessive. So I really appreciate all of Rachel Stevens' videos about writing and plotting and, you know, just all of that. <laughs> so I definitely take a lot of inspiration from her in terms of like planning and stuff. I also, um, I used to watch a lot of Sarah Cannon's videos. Uh, you know her from the Heart Breathings channel. She is always being like so candid and like showing like like her process and what her notebooks look like and first of all I admire that because I get really goofy showing stuff like that and I'm embarrassed. But second of all, I appreciate that because, like I said, I'm a visual learner. I like being able to see how other people do things so that I can adapt them and do them myself. <laughs> so I take a lot of inspiration from other people, but I think it's paying off. I think I have found a method that actually works for me and I am just super thrilled about that. And I have finally found a method that keeps me productive and I'm able to continue to be creative, but also work by an outline, because I need an outline. I have said before, and I will say it again, I am totally lost without an outline. But with by, by using like the Romancing the Beat outline, I can be a little vague, but still have a finished story, essentially. And then when it comes time to brainstorm chapter by chapter, you know, then I can be a little bit more spontaneous with what happens in that chapter. So that has been cool. It's like a, I've, I've hacked a way into being spontaneous, but also living rigidly by an outline. So I'm super excited about that. So maybe, hopefully, it inspires some of y'all. I don't know. Like I said, I will try to link all the products I mentioned down below because I know I complained a lot about Talia products their excessive branding, the fact that I got a divider that was punched wrong, and you know, the paper quality isn't the best. Like I said, Happy Planner has the best quality stuff, but for the price, and it came pretty quickly, I do really enjoy Talia. I'm not sponsored. I wish I was. Hit me up, Talia. So yeah, that is April Kay's process. That is how she writes, and it's working. <laughs> As far as like story news, I guess, um, like I said, I'm currently doing the first round of revisions on my first book. Sorry, my hair looks so freaking flat today. But um, I'm doing the first round of revisions on the first book in my paranormal, paranormal romance, erotic romance series. And my initial plan was to do revisions on this book and then do revisions on the second book that I have finished and then just kind of bounce between the two finishing them. But I actually started thinking about the next couple that I want to write book three about and I'm getting really excited about that. So I might just kind of put the revisions on the back burner or maybe finish, well I'm gonna finish revisions for the first book. Maybe I'll send it to my friends that are interested so they can tell me what they think. And while they're reading and getting their thoughts like together to give me. I will use that time maybe to start planning out the third book just so I can get it out of my head and out of my system. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I've asked this before. Are you a plotter? Are you a pantser? Or are you a planter? Uh, comment down below. Let me know what your process looks like or I don't know. Are you a fan of Rachel Steven? 
I love her. I think I think a small part of me like has like a little bit of a crush on her. Like not a weird crush, just a you know I admire her and I like her accent. <laughs> uh, also like this video and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. If you like my content, obviously. If you don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> but if you like my content, if you like nerds rambling about office supplies and writing, obviously, I think we can be friends. So yeah, all that fun stuff down below. And I will see you guys in my next video. If you've made it this far, I appreciate the hell out of you. Thank you so much for watching.